Well, a couple of announcements before we get started. We don't have a lot of announcements because we don't have a meeting or a contest this month. So, but we do have the picnic coming up on the 31st. So, Mike is not here today. So, you can't tell him that you would like to make a reservation. Maybe he'll join us. But if not, send him an email or give him a call. You can always find his contact information if you forget it and it's not in your address book on the Division 8 website, which Fred will show you where it is later on the pie card page, if nothing else. His contact information is always on page 8 of the pie card. We'll mention, for Barry's sake, that don't forget we got a double contest, our first double contest of the new contest year coming up in August which is highway vehicles and maintenance of way vehicles. So two separate contests run concurrently. You can enter two different items and two separate contests that will be concurrent for the August contest. And of course, at the picnic, we'll be awarding the uh, annual contest awards for first, second and third place. Okay, Russ, would you like to make some introductions here to uh, yeah, Barry, uh, Barry, uh, for instance? Yeah, thank, thanks, uh, Ron. So uh, probably most of you know that uh, uh, myself and uh, Mike Barry work part-time at Scale Reproductions. And of course we order a lot of stuff for, for people. And uh, 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 one day uh, Barry had, uh, got in a whole bunch of cars that he had on order. And, and so I said, well, Barry, uh, do you have a layout for these? He goes, yeah. So uh, I twisted his arm. So uh, Barry's gonna give us a tour of his layout. So Barry, I'll let you uh, take it away. <clears throat> it, I just made you a co-host, Barry. Barry's got it together today. And it took a while, let me tell you, but I finally got it ready to go. So welcome everybody, good afternoon to the Saddleback branch of the Santa Fe Railway. And uh, my layout is a HO scale point to point switching layout. And I started building it in 2004 and it just kept growing and growing. And it represents a fictitious um, citrus district line in Orange County, California, where I grew up. And it is proto freelanced. Um, it has realistic elements for July of 1974 which was a crucial moment where there was a transition going on between agricultural and suburban landscapes in Orange County and other elements were changing rapidly that I'll tell you about as we go on. Earlier in life, when I was five years old, my dad got me started in model railroading with a Sears catalog mm -hmm. HO scale train that we put on a loop of plywood and then uh, changed in 1970 as the family was growing to an end scale layout that would slip underneath my bed when I wasn't working with it. And it was a um, fictitious railroad called Santiago Industrial Railroad. And then in 1994, a friend of mine gave me all of the track and equipment and structure kits for a Central Pacific Railroad. And I made it into a mining branch line. So that's kind of the over the years, the different layouts I've done. So this layout started um, with a single um, foam insulation board, and then it grew and grew to 36 square feet with about 33 linear feet of track. The various insulation boards as I added them were just um, mounted on desktops and cabinets. And then I covered them with plaster cloth and painted them and then built the scenery up from there using Cotto sectional track and the original MRC Prodigy Express DCC from about 20 years ago. Now, in just the last few years, um, the layout has been converted to birch plywood boards. It's still in a U shape, but now it's up on bookcase tops, a lot higher and with a lot more aisle space. I tried painting it and then putting gravel on it and that did not work too good. So we're gonna continue forward with the um, with the plaster cloth in the future. And then we're gonna change over to Code 83 Atlas Flex track and Walther Shinohara turnouts, which have been purchased and that'll be much better for the track. Right now we're at 40 square feet on the reconstituted layout. So on the agricultural side, citrus groves is the main game. 
We also have tomato fields, sugar beets, beef cattle and dairy cattle, all of which were part of the Orange County scene. Industrially, the packing houses are center stage. And then in support of them is a box factory, a produce distributor and cold storage. And then for the other industries, the feed mill, the oil drilling and the lumber yard. Now for the residential, which is taking over Orange County, we have the old bungalows from the earlier part of the century, the modern ranch houses, and then lots of new construction representing the new neighborhoods being built. For rail facilities, we do have a depot that you'll see in a freight house, a shanty and a maintenance away facility. We do have a team track, a layover track for power and a runaround track for the locals to run around. And then in supporting the operations, we have an ice deck and an ice plant along with a truck depot and a truck scales for the um, local trucks. Generally, I operated about 30 minutes once a week using a single MRC DCC cab. I also have an optional MRC DC power pack for when I pull out old DC locomotives from time to time. Now the entire branch is within yard limits in the town of Saddleback. So it keeps the switching moves slow and uh, kind of keeps signaling and all that simple. We have a Santa Fe turn from the Santa Fe Railway that comes down from my hometown of Fullerton. We also have a Santa Ana turn. We also have Southern Pacific that has trackage rights. That's ever since the Pacific Electric branch was abandoned after Southern Pacific bought that railroad. Now Santa Fe, they operate their locals from noon to midnight in Saddleback. And then the SP operates theirs from midnight to noon. And that keeps uh, head end collisions at a minimum. I do use an authentic Santa Fe switch list to build up my switch lists. And recently the Union Pacific has requested haulage rights on my layout and I am reluctantly agreeing to let them on the layout now. So that's late breaking news. So this period was a transition when the old Alco power was beginning to give way to EMD more and more. We're seeing a lot of new locomotives coming and a lot of rebuilt locomotives coming out of the shops. Caboose is also new and rebuilt. So it's really a time of transition. This first photograph really demonstrates that. What we have here is we have, um, let's see, Santa Fe's CF7. Now CF7 is a rebuilt F7 that uh, was um, done at the Claiborne shops in Texas by the Santa Fe so that they could get another decade or so in uh, local and um, switching power out of these locomotives. So it's spotting a mechanical reefer at the packing house in Saddleback and they'll be loading Valencia oranges onto that um, mechanical reefer. The CF7 is uh, an Athern ready to run that then had DCC sound installed in it. And the reefer is an authentic inner mountain that's very close to the Santa Fe prototype. The reefer trailer is from Trainworks and it also is an authentic Sunkiss paint scheme that they used on trailers. The packing house is from yesteryear and it is a kit made of, of a um, prototype in Riverside, California. Now we have the depot. Um, this depot is, oops, excuse me. There we go. <clears throat> this depot is our um, freight house and passenger station in Saddleback. Now the freight house is now a maintenance away warehouse since passenger um, service was discontinued. The adjacent depot is now a Greyhound and a transit bus station. This structure is from Cornerstone and it's based on the Portales, New Mexico, Santa Fe station. Now it has actual plaster coating over the um, styrene to give it an authentic texture. Um, the two buses are authentic MCI Greyhound bus and flexible transit bus from Rapid Transit District. And they're from um, iconic replicas. If you guys like trucks and buses and that type of thing, iconic replicas is truly outstanding. <clears throat> okay. This is a Alco S4 number 1526. 
This locomotive is months away from retirement, thanks to all those CF7s coming out of Claiborne. Now it's idling for a while and the crew in the Saddleback Turn is at beans inside of Norma's smorgasbord here. And it's right across from the depot, so it's very convenient. So the Alco came from Atlas, it's an old one. So it had DCC sound put in and I'm impatiently waiting for the retooled version to come out later this year. The restaurant is actually a Hellion uh, prototype kit of Hans Christian Andersen's birthplace in Denmark. And that's of course a tip of the hat to my great grandfather's birthplace. <clears throat> okay. This is a wholesale Christmas tree distributor and they have just finished unloading a modernized Santa Fe 40 foot box car um, from freshly cut pine trees from the Northwest. Now the crew's enjoying a game of checkers outside the yard shanty at Saddleback. Well, the box car is um, your basic Athern box car. And I think many of you recognize the shanty. That's the cla classic Atlas kit there. <clears throat> This is J.W. Flammer's Saddleback Feed Mill. The crew is busy unloading another hopper of cattle feed for the local dairies and, and beef ranches. Pretty soon though, the farmers are gonna relocate all of their ranches out to the outlying counties because agriculture is giving way to new housing developments in Orange County. So the supply house is a classic lifelike kit and the um, hopper car is an authentic hopper car from Athern. <clears throat> well, this uh, SP composite gondola has been newly refurbished and repainted. It has extended sides and it'll be delivering its um, lading of, of um, sugar beets to the Holly Sugar Mill in Orange County. This is the very last season of locally sourced sugar beets coming into the mill. Right next to it is a brand new Burlington Northern center partition flat car. That was the technology that Burlington Northern pioneered and um, it will deliver its load of Union Forest products to the Saddleback Lumber Yard for a new housing project that's being proposed for the site of those dusty sugar beet rows out there. So the authentic gondola is from Inner Mountain and I used a load of anise seed to represent sugar beets. And the flat is from Exact Rail. And those are um, Jagger products for the lumber loads, which I highly recommend his products. <clears throat> Del Monte's California Packing Corporation food products facility is filling up a spacious brand new Santa Fe double door insulated box car with canned tomato products. And they're filling that Bud of California 40 foot reefer trailer with fresh tomatoes, all of which are headed to Eastern markets on a Santa Fe hotshot intermodal train within the next 24 hours. The packing house is from Cornerstone and it is an authentic Del Monte structure from Santa Ana, California. The box car is from BLMA, a company that started in Fullerton, my hometown right across from the Santa Fe Depot and now is part of Atlas. The reefer trailer is by Trainworks. And again, if you guys like trucks, Trainworks HO, really, really good stuff. <clears throat> this seven-year-old SP SW1500 is spotting a fiberboard load inside an evergreen freight car insulated box car at the Sunkist fiberboard box plant. The Saddleback um, crew there is uh, giving the maintenance away crew a greeting as they come by. The switcher is an Athern ready to run with DCC sound installed aftermarket. The box car is authentic and it is from Athern Genesis. The Ford F100 pickup is from Atlas Motoring 2000. The Citrus Exchange building there is kind of out of focus, unfortunately. That is an Alpine kit, and it's loosely based on a packing house in Anaheim, California. <clears throat> a 
So the engineer of this newly rebuilt Southern Pacific GP9, now called the GP9R, is giving a wave to the Chevron tank truck driver as he's fueling the locomotive. And pretty soon they'll start their afternoon of switching by picking up their rebuilt bay window caboose that just came out of the SP shops and a Santa Fe gondola with a sheet steel load. So the GP9R is again, Athern Genesis. It has DCC sound at, installed in the factory. Caboose is from Centralia Car Shops. Gondola is a blue box kit. And the Ford Super Duty box truck is also from Athern. The Ford F600 fuel truck is classic metalworks. And then one day I found that wheel loader with the claw on it, and that's from Kibri. Some of you might represent the uh, uh, recognize the Quonset hut, which is from um, um, from Ricks from up in Indiana. And then that little tool shed is from Laser Art, and the windmill is a cornerstone windmill. <clears throat> so a lot of different companies there. <clears throat> Okay, the county firefighters in Orange County have just arrived with a hook and ladder truck and they're showering down a loaded Santa Fe gasoline tank car after extinguishing a welding fire on the roof of the Exxon oil field warehouse. And they're bringing that injured welder down for first aid. So the tank car is a simple Athern ready to run. Now we have wonderful American limited cars of the actual prototypes available. The American La France aerial ladder truck is from Bush. The fire crew from Woodland Scenics. The horsehead oil pump from Cornerstone. And the warehouse is kit bashed from a grant line kit. Okay, our final picture of the day. The brakeman is um, riding the soon to be retired Santa Fe Alco S2 on the Santa Ana turn. Now he's spotting an ancient wood ice reefer that's been refurbished by the Burlington Northern with sloped floors for potato bulk shipments. And it's arriving at the Saddleback Produce Distributor. They'll be providing the potato chip factory with that load as well as Alpha Beta and Safeway with lots of fresh produce. So the reefer again is authentic. In fact, I have a photo of that exact number in Fullerton with a potato load and it's from Intermountain. The switcher is Atlas Master Gold Line with DCC factory installed. And that is the retooled engine, better tooling. Freightliner cab over is Athern Blue Box and then those beautiful 40 foot reefer trailers from Trainworks. And then that building is a kit from Ayers and that is a actual prototype produce distributor from Garden Grove, California. Okay, guys, that's all. If you have any questions or anything, open to that. Okay, well, let's, you guys. let's let's move along. Barry, thank you very much. I really like your 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 attention to detail and your story that goes along with your various scenes and your and especially the authenticity. I too have been to Southern California and I recognize a lot of what I saw in your photographs, like the old Safeway tractor, for instance. In that color, you know, and I like the Winnebago. You, that color. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. That was nice too. Thanks for sharing it with us, Barry. So now we move on to who, Mr. Russell? Well, how about uh, our one of our uh, MMRs uh, with the Division Eight? Uh, uh, Bob Kukler is going to show us uh, how to how he's doing some stucco, making a very uh, unique look. Uh, to some of his buildings there. So we thank you for coming along too today, Bob. So I'll let you take it away. Okay. Uh, hopefully this won't take me too long to get uh, uh, back online again. It won't, Bob. I don't have 100% confidence <laughs> in you. Oh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think Kathy is what right there at your elbow? No, no, actually, no. she's uh, right. 30 feet away from me right now. Uh, so, I managed to we're, we're make so proud two clicks. Of you. I make, made two clicks all by myself. Outstanding. <laughs> uh, 
I like experimenting with different uh, um, scenery materials. And uh, um, oh, I guess about 10 years ago, I, I was uh, able to uh, secure a bunch of uh, um, tile grout uh, in sanded and unsanded forms. And uh, it's been sitting out in my garage for the entire time. And um, I've been looking at uh, things on Facebook uh, posted by other modelers. Um, one fellow uh, who does a lot of end scale, uh, uh, Raul Perez, uh, he's been in a number of magazines, uh, but he does um, a lot of DPM style buildings and then customizes them with things like uh, partial stucco on a wall or uh, adding um, outside entrances uh, with a stairway and things like that and basically super detail in the buildings. And uh, I thought, hey, I've got uh, something that uh, I might be able to replicate uh, stucco on the outside of a building and uh, it turned out to be a, a very simple process. Um, um, these are a couple of types of grout that I've got pictured here. Um, the bag is um, sanded grout and the uh, small canister is unsanded grout. Uh, the little dish down in front has uh, some of each inside of it in a powdered form. Um, basically, you mix it with a little bit of water. Um, you can mix it to um, anywhere from a, a thick paste um, almost to a, a paint-like consistency. And um, I've got a little trowel that I use uh, pictured at the bottom of the screen to apply it. Um, that helps me get it uh, to a fairly thin layer on the building. And um, next to it is a, a pick that once the um, stucco material has dried, I can pick at it and expose things like brick or whatever is underneath it. Um, these are some of my first attempts at um, doing the process. Um, the larger building in the background um, has a number of different layers of stucco on it, uh, some of which is uh, sanded grout and some of it is unsanded. Um, the smaller buildings are all unsanded grout. Uh, for end scale, I, I feel that the unsanded works better. Um, the sanded grout in end scale is uh, a little bit large as far as the uh, texture of it. Um, and you can see that around the edges and around some of the windows on some of the buildings where I've uh, basically picked at it. Uh, of course, you make sure that you paint the entire structure first. Um, you can also take the grout uh, either in powdered form or um, in a very thin down um, consistency and put it over the brick and um, it will also uh, fill in the mortar lines and give you, uh, you know, a decent mortar uh, uh, picture on it. Uh, it's uh, again, fairly easy to work with. Uh, this particular building, uh, the gray, on the upper floors is the actual color of the particular grout that I was using. On the lower floors, um, I took some white craft paint and 
kind of dry brushed over it. Um, I was planning on adding a, uh, a sign or something on the, uh, the white area, um, like a Coca-Cola or something like that. That's another building, uh, similar uh, techniques. Um, again, I've painted uh, some of the lower portions and left uh, parts of the upper section, uh, the basic stucco color. Um, these are some buildings that I decided um, I would make it look like uh, the adjacent building had been removed and so I masked off an area on the side of the building to represent that and then went over it with uh, the stucco mixture. Um, on this picture you can actually see it's still wet because it's shiny and then removed the tape and you get a an area of just the stucco. Um, these are the buildings uh, after the stucco mixture has dried. Um, again, on the, uh, the small three-story building, you can see where I've taken uh, the stucco mixture and used it as a mortar mix uh, in between the bricks. Here's a, a close up of that. This one, um, I took some green chalk and kind of rubbed over it to make it look like uh, it had been uh, painted a green color. Um, the um, stucco mixture is, is actually fairly easy to remove. Um, I just took my finger and kind of rubbed over it and took it down to the bricks um, with just a few passes of my finger. Um, eventually I plan on um, using a, a sealer like uh, Tester's dull coat to uh, uh, make it a little more long lasting. Um, here's one where um, I actually scratched a line and then painted the lower section. Um, I haven't quite finished this one, but I was going to make it look like a number of different rooms um, actually painted in different colors on the lower level. Um, here's a couple of the buildings with the um, stucco mixture in between the bricks as mortar. This is um, a building that I used a sanded grout on um, to kind of give a, a rougher texture on the side of the building. Uh, this is while it's still wet. Um, this is after it's dried. Um, again, it gives a, a texture that uh, you really don't find in uh, any kit form or anything. It's the other side of the building. Um, also, uh, I think Russ asked me to go over some um, buildings that I had done from um, downtown Deco uh, a while back. Um, these are end scale buildings. And uh, downtown Deco makes uh, plaster structures. Um, the entire building is, is basically white plaster. Uh, you get a few windows and very few details and some plastic material for the roof and uh, anything else you pretty much have to add yourself. Uh, as you can see, the wall thicknesses are, are a little bit thick, um, but uh, the plaster material goes together well. Um, I've done things like downspouts in the foreground there to hide the seam of where the plaster gets glued together. Um, 
people use different uh, types of adhesive to glue plaster together. Uh, I found the uh, Eileen's Tacky Glue works well. And the upper structure on this is something I scratch built um, to give a little more dimension to the, uh, the building. Again, on the other side, you can see the downspout to hide the seam. Um, they do give you a lot of um, signage, uh, basically to cover the walls and they give you um, paper material to make awnings and things with. Um, but it's, uh, it requires a lot of, uh, a lot of paint work to really uh, bring out all the details in a uh, downtown deco building. The uh, stucco look on the back of this is actually molded into the kit. It's not, uh, not something I attempted with uh, uh, grout mixture or anything. This is uh, another section of downtown deco buildings. Um, again, the upper portion over the massage parlor is uh, something that I scratch built. Um, and things like the um, billboard, uh, the roof antennas and things like that are are all additions. Um, the sidewalk um, is also an addition to the kits, but uh, um, I tried to make the uh, kits look uh, kind of rough, like, uh, like it was a, a rough area of town. Um, they give you so much signage that uh, you can pretty much cover up the entire walls on things. Um, the uh, Palace Hotel card room sign is actually a, uh, a stencil and um, it was a little tricky getting it to work right. Um, I actually had to go back over it with uh, a fine tooth brush and, uh, and touch things up quite a bit. Um, showing some of the, the detail in the brickwork. Um, again, uh, they, they model a lot of uh, uh, broken bricks and missing bricks and things in their, uh, their wall sections, uh, which makes for a pretty interesting looking building. But uh, uh, again, you have to really bring that out with, uh, with paint. Another shot of the, the same building. And here's a little bit uh, showing some roof detail I added. Uh, basically some ductwork uh, vents and uh, television antenna. And that's pretty much it uh, as far as what I've got. Um, I've got a ton of the um, grout mixtures uh, in a couple of different colors. If anybody is interested in experimenting with it, um, I could probably bring some to the picnic um, in Ziploc bags and uh, um, let, let people take some if they want. Um, any questions on anything? All right, our next presenter needs, I can't say, doesn't need an introduction. Russ, you wanna say a couple of words? A uh, couple words. <laughs> no, uh, uh, you know, our, our, <laughs> our, our Supreme Commander has uh, a few things. I think this will be pretty neat to kind of, uh, for some of us that maybe haven't uh, really gone around uh, the division's website, he's going to give us a, a quick and dirty tour of it, and maybe then that will make uh, more of us feel comfortable on, on walking around it a little bit more, because there, 
there is some really, really great uh, information on it. So talk to us, Fred. <clears throat> Thanks, Russ. The reason we're doing this is because back uh, a couple months ago, we did the Division 8 questionnaire. Uh, we did this Division 8 questionnaire, and one of the results of that was showed it, some of the results showed us that there was an unfamiliarity with the website to include people not even knowing that Division 8 had a website. So we'll take 15, 20 minutes here and do a quick tour and a little bit of Q&A as well. If you don't know where the Division 8 website is, um, it's on the internet, and I know that helps a lot. Just open that email that sent that you received that told you that included the pie card. This is ju the July pie card. On the very last page, there's always a link right up here on the on the top of that last page. It will take you directly to the website. So you just click that link, and uh, it'll take you in there. Okay. So I've already got mine open. I'm going to start right here. Uh, the home page pretty much stays static except the bottom of the page will always change month after month after month. So generally in the middle of the page now, uh, because we have a train show really scheduled for November, we're gonna pretty much always have the flyer for the next train show coming up. So if you don't know when the train show is, you, don't want, some, you, don't want, some, you want some details, you wanna tell someone about it, go to the homepage. It's right there. You don't even have to go search on the internet or anything, look inside the, the website, it's right there. Below that, as I said, this will update each month. So toward the end of July, first part of August, we will update this to show the August and September events. And then the end of August, we'll do September and October and so forth. So it always rolls forward for you. And if you click the link for the picnic, click the link for the 600 building, it'll take you right to a Google map. So if someone doesn't know how to get there or you don't know how to get to the picnic, for example, because you haven't been there or or if you forgot how to get to the 600 building, the link will take you directly to a Google map and you'll be able to get directions from there. Also on the bottom of the page, we do have a link that will take you to the timetable. I'm not gonna go through that link right now. I'm gonna go through the left nav instead. So I'm gonna maximize the screen just so I get a little more real estate here. Oops, excuse me, I didn't wanna do that. I wanna do this, there we go. So over the top, depot is the home page. So anywhere you see that in the left nav, if you're on a subsequent page, you can just click depot and it's gonna take you back to this page. The about link, tell you a little bit about us. There was a question on the questionnaire about, hey, did you know what counties were included in division eight? There you go. There's your answer and it tells you all the counties in Indiana and in Kentucky that are part of division eight. We're kind of tall and slender, which is nice to know, uh, cause you know, Nice to be tall and slender. Um, but it, it's kind of interesting that we don't have a lot of counties to the left and right. And uh, actually the counties in Evansville, Indiana are, uh, are part of the Central Indiana Division. And those guys to get to Central Indiana Division have to go basically almost to Louisville to go north if they're gonna drive. So we, we were working on changing that a couple of years ago and then pandemic hit. So we put that off for a bit. We'll get back to that. Down on the bottom, a link to join the NMRA and also a link to the bylaws. And I'm not gonna do that right now because there's another way to get there also, okay? So let's go to the bottom. There's a link that will return to the homepage or return to the depot. And there we are back on the homepage. There is a link that will take you to Facebook and a link that will take you directly to the Division 8 YouTube channel as well. And, and I'm not going to go to either of those. Just click the link and you go out there and surf to your heart's content. And in a later uh, clinic, we are going to talk about the Division 8 Facebook and YouTube channels as well. What I find very useful is this link that will take us to the ePi card or the electronic version of the Pi card. On the top, there's a link that will tell you who the Pi card staff is and so forth. Pie card is organized by year. So 2021, 2020, 2019, and toward the end of this year, we'll be adding another block up here for 2022, of course, for the 2022 pie cards. Each month will take you to, they, excuse me, each link will take you to a different month of the pie card. So if I'm going to look for June, click the link to June, boom, there it is. As superintendent, I refer back to this a lot. I was like, oh man, we talk about that pie card. Did I write about that in the pie card? 
so much easier for me to just jump back here and to uh, take a look at that. So let me go back real quick. It's easier to do it this way. Okay. Toward the bottom of the page, it's not that uh, we haven't been doing the pie card before 2008, 2007, 2006. We just don't have copies of it. Um, Bob was not the, the pie card editor in those days, so he didn't have you know historical versions of them. If someone has a copy of, of the pie card uh, 2008 and before, send it to me, send it to Bob, we'll get it scanned and we will get those online. It's kind of nice to be able to see those. Um, and, and even if, if, if they're not there, that's, that's okay. If you don't have a complete copy, as you go back and look at some of these early ones, you'll see that a lot of those, we've got a page or two, they're not complete, but at least we have something in there. Go back to the depot again. Below the time, excuse me, the next thing under the pie card is the timetable. So we have three things in here. We have the division eight timetable. We have this current, or excuse me, coming events far and wide, and of course, return to the uh, depot. This one, coming events far and wide, is kind of interesting. This is not on the division eight website. This is not division eight. This is division 11, as you can see on top of the page. It's the Allegheny, Allegheny Plateau division. Ron and I use this a lot. Well, the board actually uses this a lot. When we're trying to schedule things to make sure that we're not scheduling over the top of something else, when you see the coming events that are on uh, the, in the pie card, when you see coming events that we talk about during the business meeting, this is a lot of where they come from is right on this page. So it's really handy to be able to see this. And uh, you can take a look down here that goes on and on and on for quite a while, all the way down to, uh, whoa, 24, 24 and, and beyond. Oh, look, look at this. 2024 Division 8 train show in Seattle, Louisville, Kentucky, March 16th through 24. Man, I tell you what, those guys are on top of things. Who in the world? Wow, I'm impressed. And, and I'm sure you, you guys are, are just as impressed. I'm sure you are. All right, let me, uh, let me go back here. Just a quick comment, Fred. I might yeah. I might add that this page is kept up to date methodically. Oh, it is. It's a good source of information and it's almost always up to date. Yep. Yeah, the biggest reason it isn't up to date is because uh, someone didn't tell the, uh, the, uh, the owner of that page that it was supposed to be up to date. And that's, that's pretty much it because nothing gets on that page unless someone tells them about it. And of course, if you click the link to the Division 8 timetable, it will take you to the current version of the timetable, uh, as current as we know it at any rate. Uh, the timetable number, if you've ever wondered about how we come up with that number, 55-whatever, 54, 52, well, it's the number of years Division 8 has been in business, 55 years, and it's the month. So this is July, which the last time I counted was the seventh month of the year. And it, this one happens to be the A version, which means it's been modified one time since it was first published back on whatever date we did that. Kind of easy to see what's going on in here. And you can see that it was current as of the 28th of June. Uh, and of course, always our disclaimer with all events are subject to change. But as you look down through this, this spreadsheet, and that's really what this is, you can see the month on the left side and then the days and times and so on and so forth. If you ever have a question about what time something's gonna be, if we're gonna have a meeting, if something happening, this is your source, okay? As we've said before during the meetings and in on the pie card as well, the website really is the source of information for us. Facebook refers back to this. Uh, when we get our Instagram account up and running, it refers back to this. This is really the historical in answer for you if you're looking to see something. If you ever have a question, you can always you know, ping one of us as well. Okay, let's return to the depot again. The next thing down is the train show. And I may just have Ron come off of mute and talk about this a little bit, but you can see what this is. This is pretty much the flyer. If you click the, the link here, this is a PDF that you could download and print it out, or you could share it with someone if you wanted to. Scroll down a bit. There's the location. If you click the, in here, uh, it gives you the, uh, excuse me, here's the, the link to the map that will open up in a separate window and then if someone's looking for directions, that's available. The dealer reservation form is also a PDF in here that if you click the link, it will open up the form. They can fill this out, print it out, send it in with a check <clears throat> for tables. 
and of course the cancellation policy and a couple pictures down here about uh, about the train show. And we're going to hope to flesh this out a little bit when we have our next train show uh, that's coming up in November. And these are the upcoming dates all the way through 2024, both spring and fall. Juan, you want to say anything about this? Uh, no, I think there's nothing that you, you covered it, Fred. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. And we'll go back up and I'll go back. Next thing down here is brass and it's, you know, you know how railroads call the, the, the leadership the brass. Uh, there's a link to the Division 8 email address. If you don't know how to get hold of Ron, Fred, Tom, Bob, Eric, uh, uh, Mike, or Russ, use that email address. And that email address will get it to us, okay? If someone has a question about Division 8 at all, use that email address, and it will be routed to the right person. And usually it's pretty darn quick about that. Division 8 actually has a phone number you can call. And of course, there's the link to the Facebook page. <clears throat> Below that, you can see the officers, the trustees, committee directors, and I need to make a change to that. I need to add someone to it. And then the Mid-Central Region officers, if you're curious about who those folks are. All right, let's go back. You can also text us, not just call us. Oh, on that number, yes, that's right. Thank you, I forgot that. Thank you. So that was brass. Go almost all the way down to the bottom, contacts. It's the exact same page, exact same HTML page. So if you click contacts or you click brass, it goes to the same page. Because most of the people that are looking for contacts are looking for the leadership team or a way to get hold of us. Most of the people are looking for the leaders are looking for a way to get hold of us anyway. Why create two different pages? It is exactly the same page. So through the magic of the internet, we can do that. Um, monthly meeting contest. Lots of stuff in here. Up on the top, it talks about it a, bit, a little bit. It talks about the current contest year. There's a link here that takes you to bum, 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 the photo contest, the current photos, okay? You gotta recognize a few of those if you participated in the contest this last time. I think just about everybody on this call did that. Uh, below that, of course, uh, you can go back and take a look at each of the months, which kind of makes it nice that if you wanna go back and say, hey, what was that non-steam power back last February? There you can. Now, what we're gonna do as we go forward is we're just gonna roll forward and we're gonna overwrite and overwrite and overwrite each of these. So I'm gonna to have to change this, okay, and say August through June of each year or something. The rules are here. If you wanna know the detailed rules, it's a PDF, click the link and there you go. And these are the most current rules published just a little while ago. By a little while ago, I mean just recently, oh, go away. I got a drop down I gotta get rid of here. There we go and go back here. Uh, the entry forms complete by hand if you want to print it out, or this is also a form fillable form as well. Uh, and then of course, a link that takes you back to the pie card. Okay, Ron, Barry, you want to add anything to that at all? I don't think so, but making sure. We'll just be moving forward with a hybrid and we'll be sharing more information about that, but um... We are going to continue with this process that Fred was just talking about, and then also having a chance for people to bring their models to the, the meetings live. So that'll be great. Thanks, Barry. Uh, of course, there's there's no judging of or voting at the meeting. It's just an opportunity to share your model with whoever comes to the face-to-face -face meeting. All the competition will be online. Kind of a show and tell. All right, I'm gonna skip over members pages and come back to that at the end. I do wanna jump into achievement program real quick. This is Mark Norman, of course, he is the chairman of the achievement program. And it's really just a list of the judges and the coaches. Don't go to a judge directly, go to Mark Norman if you want something judged for the achievement program. And then Mark will coordinate with the judges, but it's nice to know who they are. There is a link down here to the NRA Achievement Program. You want to read through that. And then there's also a link in here for the uh, for certificate to show you who is where 
on uh, the, the achievement program. And this was updated, uh, actually it's more recent than February of 2020. Uh, I'll have to get the more current one up there, but, but it is actually current as far as who's on there. So if you wanna look for your name, like Bruce DeMayer is right here, 2020, is when he got his golden spikes, scenery in 2020, electrical in 2020, uh, volunteer in 2020, author in 2020. Bruce did a lot in 2020, man, I tell you what. Or if you jump down to, oh, I don't know, this guy named Tom Gunther, since he isn't on the call, we'll harass Tom. 2020, 2010 was Golden Spike, Scenery in 2017, Civil in 2019, Electrical, and so on and so forth. This is kind of nice to be able to see where everybody is and verify where you are as well. Last thing I want to talk about are the coaches over here on the right. These are people that, well, Mark Norman has confirmed uh, that Joe Fields had initially contacted a lot of them, but, but Mark Norman has confirmed with all these folks that, yes, they are willing to be a coach. So if there's someone on, if there's something you want to work on, for example, if you want to work on Dispatcher, call Bob Dawson, email Bob Dawson, contact Bob Dawson, say, hey, I'm interested in working on Dispatcher. Can you give me some points, some hints, some tricks, some whatever I need to do to make this happen? And, and Bob will provide that to you. He may pull in a couple other people, but he's available to do that. So each of these people have said that they are willing to work with you. They're not going to do the work for you. They will work with you to get you pointed in the right direction so that you can, you can get that done. I'm going to return to Depo. Um, uh, yeah. Go ahead, if, Ron. You, if you want to contact somebody that's not on, if you don't have contact information for a coach on that list, you can always send an email or text to the division and we'll put you in contact with that person. Absolutely. Or you can call certainly Mark Norman, but if you need help contacting somebody, don't be shy to send a message to the division saying, I need to get a hold of who. who. Absolutely. And Mark is actually listed on that last page of the pie card. So you could go directly there, but as Ron said, you can go through the division eight email or that phone number to call or text. Uh, Silver Spike Award, recipients over the years from 1992 to current. Wow, a lot of folks there. The SOP is not here. I'm going to show you that in a couple of minutes. Uh, fallen Flags, these are folks who've been members of Division 8 over the years, and they've passed away. And Tom has done a pretty good job of keeping up with that and posting a little picture and a bio or some information about them. It's kind of nice to be able to do that as a little memorial there for all those folks. Some local interest things, k &I Club up on top, K-Suns, uh, Louisville Connecting Lines, and so on and so forth. Hobby shops are listed here. The two primaries, of course, that do a good job, really good job of supporting Division 8, model railroad activities, and some other things down here also that you can take a look at. Then we have clinics. We do have a page of some of the clinics that we've had over the years. We started this, I don't know, four or five years ago uh, when there was nothing out there or very little out there. So you can take a look at the slide deck and take a look at the handout. We've pretty much moved to putting this on YouTube now. So we're debating whether we're going to leave this out there. I think we are. But a lot of the things we've done are on YouTube anyway. So it's almost like a double the double duty here and more work than it's worth. But the nice thing is, if you want to look, for example, on uh, at, at the time saver that I did for the Pike Bowl layout, you can open this up and you can go through the slide deck itself and uh, take a look at that. So maybe, maybe not, but it is there. It is available to you. Uh, a couple layouts that are listed. If your layout's not here or if you want updated photos or if your layout's here and you don't want to list it, uh, get hold of me. That's the best way. Get hold of Tom Gunther, and uh, we'll we'll work with you to add additional pictures out there. Because uh, I'm looking here, and you know, oh, there's Bob Kugler right there. Okay, so you might want to take a look at this yourself. Take a look and see if those are the photos you want out there. If they're not, give us a holler, and we can update that, of course. Uh, contacts information we are to rent to, to links. Wow. All right. Every month as superintendent, I receive an email from, well, I'd say eight of these 12 divisions <clears throat> that gives me a link to their recent, most recent uh, newsletter. I share that with the board. I don't share it with everybody because 
I've asked around a lot of people said, yeah, I really don't want to see that every month. Okay, fine. Then we don't share that with everybody. The board looks at them because we, we pick up ideas about what to do in division eight. Um, and then we of course share ours out as well, but you can always go right here, take a look at the website of any division in mid central region. You can take a look at the most recent newsletter that they have posted out there as well, or at least the link, the best link that we had when we, when we last updated that. There are some other links toward the bottom of here, a lot of good stuff about the area, uh, some things that are on Division 8's YouTube channel. I think what we're gonna do, and we've talked about that, is probably remove all these and just put a link out there to the channel itself because it's grown so much since, uh, since we first started doing this. And then some other interesting YouTube channels and so forth. And we are always looking for more information to put out there that y'all think would be of interest to the members. The company store, and I'm gonna let Ron talk about this a little bit. Here's some pictures, and if you scroll down a little bit, Fred, by the way, the sanitizer is almost gone. If you scroll down here, here's a complete and detailed list of everything available from the company store, along with current prices. It's all Dude, there. Bunch of stuff. Bunch of cool that's six, stuff. That's six pages of stuff. Yeah. All Thanks, you have Rob. to do if after all you have to do if you want something is send an email to division eight. Tell us what you want. We'll send you an invoice, which you can pay once you receive the merch. Or you can call or text. Yeah. All right. Last item down here is the join now, and that takes you to the NMRA uh, application form. So what I'm going to do, and I know I'm running right at 20 minutes, but that's okay. We're almost there, is go back up to members pages. Two things you need to know to get in there, and we don't share this outside of the membership. So when I produce this for, uh, for YouTube, I'll cut out what I'm about to say. And then you just clip, jump on board. And there's a lot of stuff on the members only pages. So every month when you guys say, I make a motion to approve the minutes, I make a motion to, uh, I, I second approving the minutes and I've read the minutes because that's why I'm voting to approve them. That means you've gone through that link and you found all the meeting minutes from, from all of our business meetings in here. And they're there, okay? Bob Dawson does a great job on putting those together. Now, if you go all the way out to October or November of 2021, you're gonna have a derailment because we hadn't have a meeting yet. So you didn't do anything wrong, except you clicked a link for something that doesn't exist. Uh, you know, a lot of times we don't have a meeting in July, sometimes we do. So sometimes as you'll see, there's August missing. That was the year that we did a business meeting in July, but in August we went to, we had the picnic at the grocers. So that's why that year is off a little bit, but easy to do, okay? Again, you need the username, the password, click the first link. Members list, it's a PDF document. This is just a list. I can't share the email address. I cannot share the phone number. I, you know, I just can't do that, but at least you know whether someone is a member of the Vision 8 or not. And uh, if you wanna get hold of somebody, you don't have their contact information, you know what? Send an email back to us, uh, to the Division 8 web page, website, uh, skip, Division 8 email, and uh, guess what we'll do? We'll contact them and tell them they wanna get hold of you. The bylaws, a long document, if ever there was one, is, is in here. Uh, recently updated course, because we just approved that last year, but 11 pages there, all the details. So if you're wondering why we're not doing some things or we're doing some things in certain ways, um, there you go, you can read through that. Copyright presentations, I'm not gonna open that up. That was a document that was provided to us about a year ago, if I remember, by Paul Downs giving us some rules and so forth, legal rules about fair use and not fair use and so forth. This is the NMRA at risk affidavit. If uh, I was gonna bring my grandsons to a division eight meeting, I would not be allowed to do that unless I have my daughter or son-in-law, mom and dad of the grandsons, sign off on this document saying, it's okay for grandpa to take the grandsons to the meeting. That's the rule. We're not gonna debate it. It's the NMRA rule and away we go. Uh, the train show table tally sheet. If you're gonna sell something at the train show that you want, to, or actually if you wanna give something to the Division 8 group to sell for you on your behalf at, the, at our table, that's what you fill out. The more information coming from that, 
Uh, clinic database form, we've talked about that before. We have some things in the lending library. The biggest thing we have in there, not, not the DVDs, although they are there, but the biggest thing is the fax track stuff. So there's the inventory of what's available. There's a form in there, or excuse me, there's a how to borrow, which basically says, contact Mike Berry, <laughs> because he's the librarian. And he can talk you through the process, but there is a lending agreement we'll have you sign. And if you're taking the fast track stuff out, we're gonna have you put down a little bit of cash uh, just, as a, just to hold it off for us. Toward the bottom again, Silver Spike, nomination criteria. So it's another PDF document. You can read through this. Good stuff. You're going to see this again when we roll out the uh, Silver Spike nominations here in a month or so. And the Silver Spike SOP, big old PDF. We talked about all the folks who had received the Silver Spike over the past few years. And at the very bottom, three items that we just put on here, uh, the Division 8 T-Track SOP a how to build a T-Track module uh, in a PDF form, and it's just a few pages long here. Okay, and the last item on there is a shopping list. So if you're gonna go out and buy, build a double, which is what we always recommend starting with, uh, here's a shopping list. Go buy this stuff and put it together based on the how to build and the SOP, and you should be good to go. And many thanks to uh, Bruce DeMayer for working with the board over the last couple of months to put those together and have them available for me to highlight today. More in the August pie card about uh, where we're going to try and go with T-Track in upcoming months. And I know I'm over time, but I think it's pretty close. So questions, comments, or anything else about our quick little tour of the Division 8 website. As always, thank you for, uh, thank you for hosting today's meeting. Yeah, you did a good job, Ron. Thanks, Ron. Thank you all.